Hi everyone, this is a short video about group 1 of the periodic table, which is also known as the alkali metals. I just want you to be able to recall some simple properties of these group 1 elements. There are two types of property, chemical properties and physical properties. A chemical property is to do with their chemical reactions, how it reacts, how quickly it reacts, what it reacts with. And a physical property is something that can be observed or measured. Its colour, its melting point, its density, that sort of thing. Let's look at which elements are the group 1 elements, and then let's look at what some of their properties are. Firstly, group 1 is the first column in the periodic table. They are lithium, sodium, potassium, cesium, rubidium and francium. In the image you have hydrogen there, but usually in your periodic table hydrogen would be hovering in the middle of the top row of the periodic table, somewhere around where the P or the 1 is. Group 1 elements are also known as the alkali metals. Group 1 metals have some properties in common with all metals and some things that are slightly different. Because alkali metals, they're grey solids with silvery surfaces, that's something you would expect of most metals. They do react very quickly with air and they turn dull. So in the bottom picture, you can see this is potassium and this part is quite dark, but where it's been freshly cut is silvery. That's because they react with oxygen and they're very reactive. That silver part will turn back to this very dark colour quite quickly as it reacts with oxygen and produces potassium oxide. They react violently with water. You may have seen this in a lesson. These two, I've written them in red, they are chemical properties because it's about how they react, react with oxygen or react with water. Something that alkaline metals are that other metals usually aren't is soft and easily cut. And they also have low densities compared to other metals. They float on water. They have a density less than water. They're good conductors of heat and of electricity, like other metals. But they have low melting and boiling points. Other metals tend to have higher ones, although not all of them. Let's look specifically at some physical properties. These give some examples of them. We have density, hardness, which is how easy it is to scratch, the melting and boiling points. The atomic radius, the size of an atom. The electrical conductivity, how easy it is that it conducts electricity. And its strength, if you were to apply a force, how strong would it be? We can see, not in every case, but we can see trends in these properties. So in this case, the density gets higher in general. Sodium is a small outlier, or potassium, depending on your opinion. We have a hardness, and the hardness gets lower. It, I can testify it gets much easier to cut these metals as you go down the group. Their melting point, there is a general trend there, and their boiling point. Their atomic radius, they get bigger as we go down the group. Well, you'd expect that, because they have more electrons in every period of the periodic table. Their electrical conductivity, and the exceptional here of lithium, but they are less able to conduct electricity as you go down the group. So there are patterns in these physical properties. Now, you don't need to remember any of these values, but you do need to be aware that these things are not chemical reactions. Therefore, they must be physical properties. And if you see a table like this, you can look for the patterns. Do they get bigger? And therefore, can I predict what a missing value will be? That this number here for potassium strength would be between sodium and rubidiums. Having just looked at the physical properties and seen that there are patterns, would it surprise you to know that there are patterns in the chemical properties as well? Let's just look at one example, and that would be the alkali metals reacting with oxygen. You'll know already that if you react a metal with oxygen, you will get the metal oxide, so lithium oxide, sodium oxide, and potassium oxide, and so on down the group. 
But let's look a little bit more carefully by looking at the balanced symbol equation. Look how lithium forms lithium oxide with two lithium ions and one oxygen ion. That will be because lithium is in group 1 and oxygen is group 6. Lithium forms an ion with one positive charge. Oxygen forms an ion with two negative charges. So in order for it to be overall neutral, we need two lithiums and one oxygen. But because sodium is in group 1, it also forms an ion with one plus. So we end up with this formula. And you can see all the way down that this formula and this one and this one all look incredibly similar, with the only exception being that our metal is different. So an exam question may ask you what happens with one of the other metals in group one, given that this is what happens with lithium. And you can see that the chemical properties are going to be very, very similar. In fact, and we'll look at this next lesson, in fact, the difference between them is how violently they react, not the way that they react. Now, at the end of this video, I want you to consider these key questions to take away. What are the elements in group one? Where is it in the periodic table? Well, actually, if you consider where it is, then you can find what the elements are. If I'm calling them group one, what is the other name given to those group one metals? What's a physical property? And what are some of the physical properties common to group one elements? What's a chemical property? And we discussed one chemical property that is common to group one elements. By considering these, then you have the key points of this video.